Hi, I'm Nader, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Wanted to do a brand new mini series on KDEN Live, just going in depth and deep on how the tool works and how you can get the most out of it. Let's get to that. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. If this is your first time joining in, thank you so much. I do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning um, to surface the cheap or free art technology tools that you can know about them and make the most out of them. So we're going back today on KDEN Live. It's a tool that I've talked about many times to date, um, and I'm not trying to exhaust the topic, but I really felt like there's a lot of questions and it is a complex tool, um, but there's also a lot of power and I wanted to take the time to show you how it all fits together and do through a, a series of videos focusing on different things. So today we're going to do the interface and I'm going to explain in depth how that all begins and then we'll get into deeper concepts, things like the effects panel, things like audio work and those kind of things. All right. So I'm going to begin by turning off the camera here so you can see everything that is on the interface. Coming into the, the tool, the default space that they drop you is the audio space. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. And I'm working right now on version 20.8.3. Okay, just to give you a point of reference of where I am right now. That is the latest that I'm aware of as of this moment. All right. So workspaces. These are workspaces designed to optimize your kind of work. The tools between these workspaces they, they will focus you on different things, but it offers the same tool set regardless of which one. You can always go into view and you can flip on or off the dockers and the, the tabs that make the most sense. But these are just kind of the optimized starting points for you to begin. I'm going to hop through these so you can get a sense of how this works. Logging is pretty cool because you can work on a clip and you can make notes about it either for yourself or if you're going to work on a project uh, as a group you can drag clips in there and work on it and to demonstrate this i'm actually just going to take a clip i'm going to take that intro that you saw the really snazzy one here and work on that also by the way to note when you do load things in it will make recommendations to you to scale things better I suggest always doing that because if you're going to be working with clips that have potentially multiple time code signatures and um, and lengths like that, it's trying to make them uniform so you don't run into problems scaling your video. So always do that if you can. <laughs> All right, so first clip here, we brought something in to work with and we can look at notes. If I play it, we can see that's my clip. It's what it is. I can use this button down here, just to give an example, to create a bookmark within the file. So if I look at, okay, this, this particular part of that video is important to me, I'm going to create a bookmark. It will note the time code, the specific frame uh, that I am working with there, and I can add some text to it. And I could keep working on this. I could find another point. Uh, yeah, that's important too. Click that bookmark button. Again, it captures a specific time code piece and make more notes. And what's cool here is that I can actually hop back and forth with these things to refer back to them. Now, important to note here is that these attributes, they're being marked only alongside this file in the project bin. That's not gonna follow you, at least not as far as I'm aware, into the timeline where you do your editing. So that's an important thing to remember. These are not gonna turn up in your timeline. These are just for when you're kind of building out project and making notes on those things, okay? So editing. Next workspace over. This is where I spend most of my time because this is just kind of where things fell into place and it made the most sense and it resonated with me that I could get things done. <laughs> so I spend a lot of my time editing. We'll come back into this and, and pull apart the specifics. Again, the tool sets, um, they focus you differently, but all the same tools are available and, and we'll go through them here because they're easiest to see, I think. So in audio, audio focuses you on the audio editing experience, kind of pulling out the master levels and the different track volume levels. If you had more than one, you can continue to add more tracks, uh, right clicking on wherever you want to insert them above or below. You can do that. Uh, there's also the effects 
bin up here where you can um, search for things and work for those and drag them on the clips. We'll kind of cover that kind of concept later. That becomes more advanced as we go, but know that it's there. There is the specific effects area, which is where you can add in different kinds of adjustments, different filters, different transforms, all kinds of really nifty stuff. Um, again, I'm not going to go too deep because there's a lot that you could do here and I don't want to overwhelm you with information. Last one is the color workspace where you could work with colorizing. And again, just not going to dive too deep here recovering just that it's there for now. All right. So I'm going to hop back into editing and let's start there. All right. I've already got my one clip. If I wanted to get organized, if I expect this project to get huge in a lot of ways, I can make folders using the folder button up here. I can really name that whatever I want, but let's just say I wanted to organize my video. Let's say I was expecting specific audio points, um, and I could break that down further as a subfolder, uh, making it soundtracks, you know, and possibly effects, things like that. Um, I could make another video here for images, and you can really get as granular as you want here, all right? But the idea is that you can keep your project organized if you're going to have a ton of stuff, a couple, you know, con tons of different media formats to work with uh, that you can refer back to easily. All right, that covers the uh, the project bin and the workspaces and how we kind of get things started. Let's actually drag something in here, right, and see what what happens. All right, so we have our clip. A good thing to know right out of the gate here is that. I can use the mouse roller to move back and forth along the, the project timeline track. I'm rolling back and forth. I can also hold control and roller on the mouse, and that'll actually help me adjust the scale of what I'm looking at. All right, that's really cool if I want to get a closer look at something here and see you know, more on a frame by frame level, or if I need to get, kind of get the bigger picture and it will scale that out so I can work either on a high level or a very close level with that, all right? You'll notice that my clip shows the audio waveform. It does not do that by default, okay? So to flip that on, what you actually have to do is go to settings. You have to go to configure KDEN Live and under the timeline area, there's this box for audio. You have to flip that on and apply it and then you actually have to close and reopen the tool. And once you've done that, it will actually start enumerating out the waveform so you can see it. And that's a very useful thing for a lot of things because you may want to line up portions of your video with the audio. And it's good to see the waveform because that tells you where you are in the track in a lot of ways. So I would recommend flipping that on and making use of that. All right, to continue on along the left here, uh, these things on the left, this tells the timeline which one you want to auto insert to if you choose to do that. Um, I always keep it down here um, because I always work with the one and video and audio, but that's up to you. <laughs> that's just what that does. All right. The other buttons here would be to disable or hide the video, lock it so it doesn't move. You actually can fully disable it by clicking on this V1 or whatever or A1 so that it just it nullifies it completely. All right. Similar for audio, you could mute it, you can lock it and disable it. Same ideas. Okay. You do have a couple of different modes and I'll jump through these here. Uh, I like to work in normal. That's just kind of where I've, I've found a rhythm, but you could do overwrite where I could take a clip and let's just say, I know I want to drop it here. That has now overwritten everything up to that point on what I've just dropped it onto. Because if I drag this away, you can see it's gone. So that's overwrite if I know I want to work in that kind of fashion. I could do insert where I know that I want to be non-destructive. I just I know I want to fit something in between something and have it dynamically space apart. I can do that or I just want to drop it between those two and you can see it separated those two cuts. So that's insert mode could be very useful in that regard. I'm going to flip back to normal here. All right, working our way through these tools, selector is commonly what you use. That's what you click and drag with and work with most of the time. You could use the specific cut tool if you wanted to to make more cuts, although I find it more useful just to put the playback scrubber somewhere that I know I want to be because I can see it 
and then right click and you cut clip because that does the same thing and it prevents you from having to flip back and forth between tools. It's just faster from a workflow perspective. All right. The last thing here is spacing and really all that is is you're just dragging stuff. <laughs> all right. Um, you could use it to do you know, a series of things where if you want to keep things intact as you move them, that could be useful as well. It's different from the selector where you're moving just one element. Okay. These modes down here, uh, remember we talked about uh, inserting things, inserting a clip into the time zone. That's what that button's going to do. And again, it's this is deciding this label where that goes. Okay. Um, if I wanted to overwrite, we already went over what that does, the different modes. Remember, overwrite how it will drop on top of whatever it is. There it goes. <laughs> These are kind of cool in that you can take pieces away in different fashion. So th this is going to look at the, uh, the timeline zone. That's this thing which you almost can't even see. You can think of this like the project workspace if you're coming from uh, Adobe Premiere. Uh, you don't have to use it, but you do get some benefits uh, that can control what you export. Uh, and also for this tool, what you're going to extract. So let's say that, okay, I'm working in here and I want to extract that piece. You can see how that just flushed it out. It extracted it and it's gone. That can be useful because I can use this kind of selector to get a broad range of things without having to come in here and, you know, I want to get rid of this, 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 and then if I have a complex timeline, that could take forever. So that's a really cool tool where I can just use this selector space to define a space if I know I don't need any of it and use that extract to get rid of it. Now, lifting is kind of cool also because that's a similar idea, except it assumes that I don't want to regain that space in the timeline. I can just lift it out and it does ultimately remove it, but it maintains that empty space. So those are pretty cool. This would be to look at your favorite effects if you use those. I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, previewing has to do with uh, really complex things that require some um, compiling. Uh, so again, not going to touch on that now. And the audio mixer uh, is over on the right, and which can be useful if you want to play with that here. All right. So whew, that was a stretch. <laughs> Up over here, this is your clip viewer, just to kind of cover all the complete features here. Um, and this is really looking at whatever you're looking at on this side of things. Okay. Over here is actually what you're editing. So if I come over here and play, that's actually what my project looks like. You can see the long space in between. Now, to add one more point here about the zone, that becomes important when you're going to think about things like exporting. Okay, if I go to Project and Render, you have this option to do Selected Zone. That's really cool because you could work on a bunch of stuff and let's say, okay, well, I know I'm done with just this piece here. That's what I want. Okay, I could use that option to say that's all that gets exported. I know very often when we work on things, we have kind of like the gray space where, uh, you know, we'll just, maybe I don't need this now, but I'll drag this aside and maybe I'll need it as I, you know, evolve this project or this video. You can exclude that from the final export using this selector space and maintain it within the project. So other quick notables here just occurred to me is that you can add markers and things. Um, you can actually add project notes right from here. We went over that kind of concept before, um, but you can add markers uh, if that's helpful, but you can assign different colors and things uh, for reference in your, in your project here. And I believe you have the option, yeah, where you can use those, you can add guides, which are a similar concept. And those are kind of neat because you can actually drop and, and point yourself to them. So you have some ideas and some places that you can use to flag important areas on the timeline. That's different than the project. And by the way, that also appears here where I can see those things. Um, I can click on them and it will refer back again to the video here, not down here. <laughs> Um, but it's another way that you can mark on the timeline things that matter and things that you want to, to maintain to work with. All right. 
So that's a lot of the overview that you're trying, you know, that, that I hope gives you a good picture of where the, the tools and the initial features work out. Um, I'll mention quickly that effects also drop on the right hand side. I'm not going to go into detail right now, but if I were to drop an effect down here, uh, we have the option. I have to select a clip, but we now have the option to see the effect options right alongside what I'm doing. Um, and I'll go into better detail about how all these different things work. I'm not going to do that now because, again, so much information. But that's kind of the gist of how things fall so you understand uh, that layout. You do have options also up here in these viewers if I wanted to get closer or shrink away uh, just to kind of see different facets of things. Um, here, if I wanted to get zoomed in, I could do that. That becomes more useful as you're working with transform effects and things like that. You can, of course, uh, drag things to, to optimize a little bit better. So maybe I don't want to see quite so much of this. I want to see more of my viewer here. You can drag the timeline up and down. You can actually truncate and resize these, which is really cool, uh, which can be really useful to see. OK, I want to see more of this. I want to see more of my thumbnail so I get a better sense of that. I can double click it back down so I can you know, not have that taking up so much space all the time. You may have quickly noticed that I can give the track a name, which is really cool, uh, which can help for organization further. That becomes more clear as you drag it out. Um, just kind of throw that in there as a, a last nugget. All right. So again, I know that is a ton of information, but I do hope it gives you a good sense at least of how the tool begins to function because there's so much invested here. So that's it for the interface. I'm going to jump into the more advanced concepts as we go, but we have got to have a foundation to build from, right? Uh, so again, this has been Photo Learningism. I'm Nate. I really hope this was a good introduction, that it was useful to you and informative to you. Uh, please consider giving me a thumbs up if it was helpful. We'll continue on with this series. Consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the rest of the series as we fight our way through this and, and start to build off some really, really cool effects and things. I, I, I hope you don't miss it. It's going to be so much fun. Um, leave a comment. Join the conversation. And not comments just for me because, again, the aim is to build a community of learning. Uh, it's for everyone. I really want to share the knowledge um, from what I know, from what others know, and I want to assist in efforts to build this up as a community of learners. So thank you so much for joining in. I'll see you at the next video.